My name is Adit, and today I'm going to take you on a philosophical journey. Around 290 BC, Zeno of Citium arrived on the shores of Athens. He had just suffered a costly shipwreck. In that shipwreck, he lost years' worth of hard work, intellectual property, money, and a lot of effort that he had put in, all the resources he accumulated. All of that was gone in an instant. And the ancient biographer Diogenes Larchius mentioned his biography that the moment Zero arrived on the shores of Athens, he said, now that I've suffered shipwreck, I'm on a good journey. Now, this is extremely baffling for some of us, right? Imagine you lost all your hard work and money in an instant. You would be sad. You'd be anxious. You'd be worried, right? But Zeno thought otherwise. Zeno had a different philosophy. He believed that there were a few things that he can control and a few things that he can't. And the things that he can't control were the headwinds, the shipwreck, and him losing everything in an instant. But what he could control was what he said, what he did, and what he thought. Right? So Zeno instead focused on what he could control, and he had his philosophy, he had his mindset. So he decided to preach Stoicism, his own philosophy, at the Sto uh, Stoa Apocale in Athens. And he became successful again. So the underlying principle of Stoicism, which was found by Zeno, is that there's a dichotomy of control. A dichotomy of control says that there are few things that you can control and few things that you can't. And hopefully the questions in your mind is, what can I control? Here's a diagram that simplifies it for you. Your control is the response to every event that occurs. And that control is what you say, what you do, and what you think. The rest of it is not within your control. All the other events that occur are not within your control. You can only control your response to those events. Now, there are several applications to this dichotomy of control, especially for our generation and a lot of you. Some days we encounter poor job performances, poor academic performances. Some days we encounter breakups, divorce. Some days we encounter the death of loved ones. And on a global level too, some days we see economic recessions. Currently, we're seeing the rise of AI taking away our jobs. And we are also seeing school shootings and climate change. But I want to ask you, are these things within your control? No. And more often than not, we tend to focus on these things. We tend to start focusing on these externals around us. That, and we try and attempt to control these things. Trust me, it's difficult. This concept is difficult to understand. Yes, some days I wish I could control my grades. I wish I could control my personal life. And I wish I could control which colleges I go to. And I'm sure you do it too. But that's the harsh reality. These things we can't control. Now, there are several applications, like I said, of this dichotomy of control. But the application I'd like to focus on today is effort and expectation. I'm sure a lot of you have felt unproductive sometimes. Sometimes you're just not feeling like it and then we want to put in some effort, right? So we go and search up motivational speeches. And what do they say? Put in effort and you shall succeed, right? Work hard and there will be success. And it's not only YouTube that has these motivational speeches, it's our parents as well. It's ingrained in our childhood. There's a trade-off to effort. That is success, right? You do your chores, you get some money. You study hard, you get good grades. Right, that's what our parents tell us. They tell us, study hard, get good grades. You know, get into a good college. Work hard there, and you will get a good job. Work well in your job, you'll be paid well. Right? There's an, always a trade-off to your effort. And your parents say that that's success. And they're really concerned, and I can understand why. Our generation is one of the most competitive generations out there. Every one of us is trying to rise the social ranks. Every one of us trying to be in the top 1%. And here are a few facts. This is the number of applicants to the top 56 universities in the United States since 2001. In 2001, merely 500,000 people. In 2022, 2.2 million. And with that, the acceptance rate of the top 56 universities in the United States in the past 20 years 2001, 
30 percent. 2022, 9 percent. So our parents aren't wrong. We have to work harder, right? Because there's so much more competition. Our generation is fiercely competitive. But there's, there's a misunderstanding somewhere. We're always told to work hard and succeed. But what is the definition of success? What defines the goals that you determine as success? Right? So I want to do a quick poll. Please raise your hands if you have been or are a high school student. Now please raise your hands if you have worked moderately hard or extremely hard in your high school years. Thank you. Please raise your hands if you have put in that effort, put in a lot of effort and said, well, I've put in, you know, I've worked hard, I will get a good grade. Now please raise your hands if you worked hard in order to get a good grade, in order to go to a good college. Finally, please raise your hands if you've put in effort and felt like you've wasted your effort or you've expected that your effort hasn't paid off. Thank you. Now the point of this poll was to understand how goals become more extrinsic. From expecting from your effort and then having an expectation from the effort itself, right? You are expecting from your effort and then expecting from that expectation. And that's where there's a misconception. And I'll tell you a story why. I joined a new high school in grade 11. And in grade 10, I scored 97% in my maths examination. Because I put in effort. And like my parents would say, you put in the effort, it paid off, you got 97%. Well done. I thought that recipe would follow here too. And I expected to do well. I put in a lot of effort, and in my first examination in this advanced math class in 11th grade, I scored a third of 97%. I scored 33%. Well, I was like, fine, that's a setback, that's a failure. I must move on, I must move ahead. So I put in more effort, and I put in a lot of effort this time. I tried different strategies. And in November, again, I went in with an expectation that I will perform well. I studied hard, extremely hard, and I did not perform. I scored 50%. This March, yet again, there was a math examination. And again, I had put in so much effort, day in, day out, only maths. But again, I expected that I'd score at least 85%. Turns out, after eight months of maths and hundreds of hours of practice, I ended up scoring 65%. It was terrible, it was shocking. But I also learned something else. Apart from 65%, there was some other realization. And that realization was focus on the intrinsic value of your effort. And I'll explain, to you that, I'll explain that to you with this slide. This was my goal before this realization. My goal was I will study math. I will score 85% in every exam and then I expected that because I studied hard in math, I'd get that grade. And because I would get that grade, I expect that I would have an overall academic portfolio that looked really well. And because that academic portfolio looked really well, I expected that my overall college application would look really well. And because of that, I might end up going to Stanford, which was a goal. But I was wrong. The reason is because these things aren't within my control. What was within my control is my effort itself. So now the goal has changed. The goal is to learn maths, to appreciate the intrinsic value of my effort. By that I mean I am going to study one hour of maths every day till I graduate high school. And I will study every concept there is so that I'll understand every concept there is and I will learn mathematics. The induced successes, the successes, the outcomes that come out of this effort are secondary, right? It may happen that I score 85% in every exam. It may happen that I have a very good academic portfolio. It may happen that I have a stunning college application. And it may happen that I go to Stanford. But that is not the goal anymore. The goal is my effort itself. And there's, 
there's a reason why I have chosen to switch my goals. Because the goal now is my effort, and I learned something from it. I learned, I learned mathematics, and I learned the subject. And now I'm not focusing on things that aren't within my control. I'm honest. I'll be honest, I cannot control whether I get into Stanford or not. But what can I control? Yes, I can control if I understand the concept, if I put in the effort. So to conclude, there are three key takeaways I want you to take from this step talk. Firstly, define your goals within the limit of your control. Appreciate the intrinsic value of your effort, right? Second, do not have any expectations from your effort. Do not expect anything, anything that's outside your control to be an expectation, right? Don't expect things outside your control to happen because of your effort. Thirdly, do not chase success. Chase goals that are intrinsic. Chase effort, chase learning. These are important facets, especially for us as a generation. In a world where there's so much change, there's so many things that we cannot control, try and focus on what you can. Remember the six words. Focus on what you can control. Thank you for listening.